Hey there, I'm Further Reading, and this is my calculator. Today we're talking about Dwarven computing, and I'll give you the building blocks you need to build something like this, or maybe even something grander than this. Before tackling a project like this, you need to solve two problems. The first problem is going to be the memory problem, which is how do you write values to memory of whatever computer you're building. In the case of a calculator, it's going to be how do you write your inputs and your outputs. The second problem you need to solve is a logic circuit, which is how do you build a system that can interact with the inputs it's getting and create the outputs that you expect. In Dwarf Fortress, uh, a great way to create memory is using pressure plates. You go into your build menu, you go into traps, and you go into pressure plate. And up here you can see you've got various things that can activate your pressure plate. Whichever system you use will be one in which you can control something pushing down your pressure plate. When it's being pushed down, it's a one. And when it's not being pushed down, it's a zero. And that's how you're going to build your memory. I tried a few things with mine. You even see over here, I did some work here with water as memory. But minecarts are the best way I found. So I'll explain how that system works. I've got a, a little test one over here I can show you. This system is usually called Newton's Cradle. And how it works is it's a way to make sure that you can have a minecart sitting on this plate when you want the memory value to be one and you want it to be empty when you want it to be zero. How it works is we've got these two gear assemblies connected to these two rollers. Uh, you can't see it here, but there's a roller under this minecart. Uh, when it's activated, this roller is going to pulse on. It's going to push this to the right. It's going to collide with this center minecart and stop moving. So now this one will be sitting on top of the pressure plate. While this one is going to keep going to the right and it's going to land on top of these rollers. You have to make sure that both of these can't be active at once. Uh, I'll show you how I did that in my calculator later on in the video. But as long as only one of these can be active, it means either it could be one or zero, I can switch pretty quickly between the two options. If you want to switch it off after you've made it into a one, all you have to do is make power go through here while stopping power going through here. In which case the minecart is going to move to the left, it's going to collide here. It's going to push this off so it collides to the wall and stops moving. And now there'll be nothing on the pressure plate and it'll be a zero. Now that you don't make memory, we're going to start talking about making our logic circuits. So I've created a little test area here to kind of show you how they all work. Uh, to build a calculator, we need to create three gates, a NOT gate, an AND gate, and an OR gate. And we're going to be co combining these at the very end to create an XOR gate. I'll show you how to do each of these now. How all these are going to work is using gear assemblies. You'll see here that this one, which I called not A, because it's going to be our not gate, is currently active. There's power going through it. And our gates are going to be controlled by making sure some of these assem some of these gear assemblies are either active or inactive, depending on what the inputs are. So this not gate is very simple. All you got to do is you got to build a gear assembly. Uh, when you build a gear assembly, it is going to be active or engaged by default. And when you connect it to a pressure plate, the pressure plate is going to change its status. So it's going to change it from engaged to disengaged. Uh, up here, we have the A plate that I've built using this Newton's Cradle mechanism. So let's pull this and we're going to see what happens to the gate down here. Okay, so now we've pulled and you can see that the minecart is sitting on top of the A plate. We go down here to our not A and it's now disengaged. So when the minecart's on top of the gate, remember that is it being the equivalent of a, a one value in memory. And when it's a one, this is disengaged and you'll see that there's now no power going through the axle. There's power going in, there's no power going out. And that's how we make our not gate. So now let's talk about the second gate, the AND gate. For the AND gate, it is going to be a one if both the inputs are one. If either input is zero or if both inputs are zero, it should be a zero. So to build this, first of all, you do what I did here. You build two gear assemblies in sequence like so. You'll see here that they are both active. There's power going through. You can see from the animation. And again, this is because when you build a gear assembly by default, it's always going to be active. So what you need to do is we actually need to deactivate it first. So you've got this lever down here that I've linked to both of those. We're going to pull this lever. And when I pull this lever, it is going to cause both of these to move into the, the, the disengaged status. Okay. So here now I've pulled the lever. And you can see this is disengaged, this is disengaged, so they're both zero, 
and that matches the plate because remember when the plate has nothing on top of it it should be zero two so now they're both matching now i can destroy this lever i don't need it anymore i just need this lever just so i could move these to disengage and what happens with the pressure plate is it doesn't specifically turn it on or off it is going to make it switch from its current status okay here now uh do some here is just pull the lever so this is moved so now a is one if you go in here you can see a is active now and if you go here you can see that b is disengaged so even though a is active there's still no power going through because they both have to be active because it's an and gate so now let's go ahead and pull this one too and we'll see what happens when b is pulled Okay, so here now, uh, Stony Raflip, who has a, a pretty spooky mask, has pulled the lever. So now we can see that B has the current on it. You, you, can see, you can already see from the animation that it's active, so both A is engaged and B is engaged. So because A and B is one, power is going through. Now let's talk about making an OR gate. For an OR gate, what you do is you have your two inputs in parallel, connecting to a central one where the power goes out of. So this means there's two paths for power to go. Power can go this way or power can go this way. So if at least one of these paths is active, power will go through. Kind of like with the AND gate, once you build them, we actually have to disengage them first because again, it is going to be engaged by default. I've already linked this lever to them. So we're going to pull the lever and someone's going to pull this lever and disengage both of them so they'll be matching what's happening up on the minecarts. Okay, so the lever's been pulled. You can see that A is disengaged and B is disengaged, which makes sense because there's nothing on either minecart, so it's now correct. We can remove this lever and also to test it out, let's go ahead and we'll pull this lever here and we'll see what happens when A is active, but B is inactive. Here you go. As you can see, Taltic here pulled the lever and now he's playing a little game here. Uh, the minecart is moved on top of the A plate. You head down here to our OR gate, you'll see that A is now active. B remains disengaged because there's nothing on top of it. And if I unpause, you can see here that there is power going through. So the power is passing through this area, even though B is disengaged. And that's how you make an OR gate. Finally, let's come down here. This is an X OR gate or an exclusive OR gate. This gate is actually a combination of the three gates we've seen before. What this is testing is to see if the inputs are different. So if A is 1 and B is 0, or A is 0 and B is 1, it should have one come out so if they're both one of the both zero nothing should happen if they're different something should happen what i've done here is i've built an a assembly i've built a not b assembly over here then over here we've got not a and over here we've got b and they're both connected to the central one that goes out if you remember from the not gates not b and not a are actually already complete right now i don't need to do anything else out, out other than building them because what's going to happen is when there's a minecart on top of the pressure plate, they will disengage. They'll be engaged when there's nothing on the pressure plate. So this is fine. But we have to fix A and we got to fix B. So to do this, I have connected this lever to A and B. We're going to pull this lever and that is going to disengage A and B. Okay, so now you've pulled the lever and you can see that A is disengaged because it's currently zero. For not B, it says inactive because there's no power going into it. However, it doesn't say disengaged. Head down here. Uh, not A is active because there's power going into it, and again, there's nothing on top of A. And then here, B is disengaged, because there is nothing on top of B. And as a result, there's no power going through the system. So we don't need this lever, we can both level up. And we're going to pull, let's say we'll pull B here. I'll show you what happens when we have just B, and we'll leave A as zero. Okay, so here we can see now that B is one. We head down here, uh, A is still disengaged. Uh, not B is also disengaged because B is 1 now. We come down here, we can see that not A is active because it's 0. And B is active because B is 1. So now there's power going through the system. And that's how you make an XOR gate. So we're going to take a little bit from Door Fortress to talk about how binary addition works. Because what we're doing here is we're converting numbers into binary and adding those numbers up using these circuits. Let's say we want to add 2 plus 7. Okay, so you got 2 here plus 7. Okay. In binary, 2 is 1, 0. 7 is 1, 1, 1. So 2 is 1, 0. 7 is 1, 1, 1. Okay? So we're going to add them together. Let's say this is A up here and this is B. So we'll be adding each of these bits one at a time. So you get 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. And here you got 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is going to be equal to 10. And we're going to put 0 down here and we're going to carry the 1. Just like you would when you're adding normally and you got a number that's bigger than 9. We'll put down 
the unit and carry the 10. So now we actually have two more numbers here to add together. So let's go over here. We'll call this C for the carry. And you got one plus one here, which is going to be equal to zero again. Uh, we're going to carry one again. So let's go ahead and let's put a zero here. And we'll put a zero here just to kind of fill up these gaps and put a zero over here as well. So now you can see we've got one plus zero plus zero, which is equal to one, zero, zero, one. Uh, and that is going to be our sum. We're going to call it S. And here we know that S is equal to nine. Well, you know, because that's how binary works. This is a one. This is an eight. Eight plus one is nine. And there we go. That is how we do binary addition. So this is how it looks like in a circuit. Uh, let me explain how this works. Here we've got A and B coming in. They go into an XOR gate. The output of that comes out then. Uh, here we get the carry from the bit before. It goes in over here. It also gets XOR. And that gives us S, the sum. Then down here, we have the output of the XOR and C from before, the carry from before. They get combined in an AND gate. While also A and B also get combined into an AND gate down here. Then both of these outputs get combined into an OR gate and it becomes C out, which is the carry. So for example, let's say we have one and one. Okay. Uh, they're both going to be the same. So that means this is zero. Let's say we have a zero from the carry before. So it'll be zero here. It'll be zero here. They're both the same. So that's zero. So one plus one is zero, which, which makes sense. Then down here, we have this combined with this. Uh, this again, this is zero. So it's and zero, which is going to be zero. Down here, we've got one and one, which is one. So one goes this way. We've got one down here, we've got zero down here. So we've got one coming out. So one plus one equals one and zero. One plus one equals 10. In order to build this, what I did was I split it into three circuits I was able to create. So I went here, I made this one. And then I made this one. And then I made this one. So first of all, I calculated the XOR of A and B. Then I calculated the XOR of the carry and the output from this. And finally, I used this to see if I had a carry or not. And this is how I built my circuits. Let me show you how this looks into a fortress. Here's the, the UI of my calculator. I've got these levers down here. The levers are the numbers between one and zero. So I can tell my dwarves to pull one of these levers and select one of the numbers. And then I can use this lever to execute the addition at the, at the end. So if I head up to this part, um, I actually used water here for the memory for this part of it. So you've got A, B, and S. So A plus B equals S from before. And this is how I convert into binary. So you'll see down here that A1 and A3 has water inside it. So it is 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, that is 5 in binary. And down here we have got 1, 1, 1. Uh, and that is 7 in binary. So the, I use water down here and we seal the water in with these gates to make sure that we get the, the right number that we need. If I head then to the brains of my calculator, I can show you the circuits. Um, this might be, a, this looks very complicated when you first see it, uh, but it's okay, I'll walk you all through it. Um, I guess uh, this being built on, you know, this multicolored landscape probably doesn't help. But basically what we have here is each one of these rows, sorry, each one of these rows is one bit. So this is A1 and B1. This is A2 and B2. This is A3 and B3. And this is uh, A4 and B4. And we just did the same circuit four times. Uh, these, this first part up here is the circuit I showed you earlier. So this one is A1 not B1, not A1 and B1, because this is the XOR of A1 and B1. Then over here, we have the output. So I call this output O, this is O1. So here we've got O1 and we have, um, I'm going to have to say no C0 to avoid getting demonetized. Uh, and then down here we have 
dot o one and we have c zero there's no c zero because this is the first bit it gets carried from before so the c zero actually doesn't connect anything and it's, it's always going to be zero but in the future ones like down here you'll see this is c1 so this is actually getting its result from over here where you calculate c1 this is connecting over to these ones over here we don't have c1 we don't have c0 so it's always going to be zero but the later ones are going to require the c from before but anyway this is going to be the xor of o1 and c0 or another way to put that the xor of the current o and the last c that will activate this one and lastly we have the third circuit we have a1 and b1 and down here we've got o1 and c0 so you'll see at the moment that uh this is currently zero and this is zero because it's a1 uh, because a1 and b1 are both one so this is going to be so not b1 is zero not even also zero so it's going to be zero then over here it's the same thing this is zero coming in from over here uh c0 is always going to be zero because there is no there is no c0 so that stays there uh but there is a carry because one plus one is ten so we have a1 and b1 are both active uh down here they're both disengaged but it's okay because it's an or gate so it comes through and activates this uh for the second part uh this is basically the opposite of the first part so basically if, if you remember from the example i gave um it is possible for the sum to change as it calculates the carries because what happens is when i pull the power and the power starts going through all this starts off but when it gets to this calculation uh c1 may not finish yet so if c1 hasn't finished yet that means it's going to give one answer and it's going to change afterwards so to allow the minecarts to change automatically what i've done is the second roller in each case is connected to a circuit that will be zero if this is one or it'll be one if this is zero so it's it's the opposite uh for the xr it's pretty easy it's uh a1 and b1 not a1 and not b1 okay because remember the xr is one if they're different uh this checks if they're the same so if either inputs the same then this is going to be one and this is going to be active and this can't be active while this is active because if they're all the same, then they can't be different. So in both these cases, that's what's happening there. Uh, this case is a bit more complex. It's actually overly complex than what it needs to be. But by making it a bit more overly complex, it was easier for me to read and debug it. In this case, what we have is A1 and B1. And up here, we've got O1 and C0. So if we have, if more than one of these is one, and more than one of these is one then we end up with the output uh, how i simplified that was i put in a1 b1 and c0 so we only get a carry if at least two of these are one so this checks to see if, is this one but are both of these zero this checks to see is this one but both of these are zero and this checks to see is the carry from before one and both of these are zero so these will only ever be one if there is only one of a b and c that is has a value of one then down here we've got not a not b and to avoid being demonetized no c if they're all zero then that means that there can't be a carry because zero plus zero plus zero can never be you know 10 or more so this is checking to see if that's the case so in all of these cases, if it's if the if, if any of these are true, then this has to be zero. So this is gonna activate this pressure plate and push this back. And this allows it to switch back and forth as the calculation progresses. So this C1 is linked down here, so it's linked over to uh here. The C1 is linked there, and then the C1 is linked there, the C1 is linked over there and so on they're all linked to each other so as the calculation progresses this is gets carried down then this one happens then this one happens and then this one happens uh this middle one is the s is the sum that is going to be the output and these are all linked over here back into this section here this is the s output and each of those plates are linked to the pump up here and also the bridge 
So what happens is if let's say it's so on this case, because it's, you know, a, it's five plus five plus seven. Uh, this is the answer here. That's that right. Yeah. Five plus seven. So this is, this is what five plus seven looks like. This is eight and this is four. So what happened was S three was one and S four was one, which meant that this is active and this is active and the bridge comes up as well. And that seals in the water and it creates zero one one zero zero is the answer. So that is how I did the binary calculation. Uh, the next step is how do I convert the binary into decimal? And this was a huge pain in the ass. How I did that was if I head back up here, I've built what's called a translation table, uh, which is basically in the case of adding two, two one dig digit numbers, there are 19 possible outcomes starting at zero, ending at 18 for nine plus nine. And what I have here is I've, I've actually marked it here so I could kind of see what I was doing. Uh, this is every combination where some of these are active and some of these are inactive depending on the number. So for example, uh, down here, this is zero. So these are all not gates for here. That's going to be, uh, not, 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 and, uh, an active one. This is not, not, not active and not and so on and so forth. So it's like every possible combination of these digits that can come out of the sum and only one of these will be active. So we'll see here, 12 is what's active. So 12 is one, one, zero, zero. So that means that this is the only one in which all of the gear assemblies in this world will be active. There's no, there'll be no other case with it, with, where this is going to be the situation, which means we're going to get 12 as the answer. So this is point what in the here, in the here to show me the answer is 12. And then what I did was if I head back here to my calculator area, I've got more pumps down here. Uh, this, this is zero to nine over here. And then this is a leading zero and a leading one. So I have all of these set those pressure plates from before. So when I have 12, that means one is active and that means two is active. So one and two are both active. So we get water in here and we get water in here. And then that means that I've got these connected. So this number one is connected to the bridges it needs to uncover the one here. Uh, this one is linked to the bridges it needs to uncover the two. So we get one and two. And yeah, that is my calculator. Lastly, let's talk about how to make this more efficient because there's definitely some problems in this design. Uh, especially if, if you want to do something like say adding two digit numbers or multiplication or division, things that are a lot more complex than this. So I'm going to talk about kind of some inefficiencies in this setup. So if you want to do a bigger project than this, uh, you will have an idea of what mistakes not to make. Uh, number one is to avoid using water. Uh, water as memory is quite awkward because it depends on the output and input flow of your water. So what that means is you need to be able to fill up the memory when needed and you'd be able to empty it when needed as well. But depending on the flow, that might not be possible. Uh, a great example of this is if I go to my translation table, in fact, here we've got one pump, this one here, this is currently pumping water out. Uh, this is connected to that river up there. And you'll see this is all ones and twos. This one pump is actually beating the river right now. It's all ones and twos. This is all twos and trees down here. So if this one pump was let go, continue forever, this could actually end up draining the river. And this is only one pump. If you're doing a very complex calculation, you might have dozens of pumps and it'll be quite difficult to make sure you have enough water that you need to do your calculation. There are ways to kind of try to reuse the water and to minimize the water draining, but it's all very complicated and still a bit fiddly. So I would recommend avoiding water. Uh, that's why if I, if I head back over here to my calculator's brains, We'll see here in the floor above, I actually had, you can see with, by, by these grates, I actually had pumps here and I was using pumps for the memory, but I, I ran into issues because of the flow. That's the main reason I switched over to these minecarts. The second piece of advice is to avoid having calculations depend on the results of other calculations. Uh, this can be also described as uh, minimize how often you write to memory. Basically here we were own one write, and over here we have, this depends on the result of this. So that means this is going to start with some answer then this is going to fly over, become a one, which is going to change the answer over here. It's really important when it comes to the C's in fact, because if the C changes, then that means that C is going to change both the C and the S of the one next and so on and so forth. So you end up having numbers switching back and forth as 
the calculation kind of trickles down your system. And it's better to avoid that because if you can avoid that, your calculations will, calculations will be faster and there can be less problems with, say, bridges going out of sync because they're trying to switch between numbers too fast. So for example here, we know that this circuit is going to be 01 and we know that this circuit is going to be not 01. So wherever we see 01, rather than having this connected to this here, we can have this maybe connect here instead directly. So we have the power goes directly to the system. And the same over here. So here we've got, you know, not 01 over here. If we could get this connected directly over here, that'd be better. It can be a bit complicated because, you know, uh, you can't have axles go through the same slots. You might have to go like up and down Z levels. You might need to maybe like remake this circuit a couple of times, perhaps, or just, just have tons of spaghetti in your calculator. It's really up to you how you solve that problem. But the benefit of that is that as soon as you have your five and your seven selected, if everything is defined using A and B, that means that as soon as you pull the second lever, the result will be done. Uh, a third way to make it more efficient is this circuit is incredibly inefficient. Uh, there's a few ways we can make this simpler. First way is here, these first two. This is A1 and B1. This is NA1 and B1, okay? That is O. A1 and B1. NA1 and B1. And here, this is both NC0. So what we could do here is we could replace these two branches with just O1 NC0. And if it following the advice from before, that would just be this is going to connect to NC0 over here directly. That way you can uh, you know, remove all of these gear assemblies from your system. Uh, likewise down here, we have C0 and we have uh, NC0 and we have A1, B1, say so NA1 and B1 and NA1 and NB1, okay? So if the exact same two in front, and then here we have C0 and NC0, so both possible values of C0 here. And that means that the value of C0 is irrelevant because either this will be true or this will be true. So it, it doesn't really matter. C0 doesn't, no longer matters here. So these two can be replaced with just NA1 and NB1. So you can turn these four branches into just two branches and each of the two branches will themselves only have two gear assemblies. So they'll look exactly like this. So we currently have 20 gear assemblies here and it can be reduced to just, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can remove 13 gear assemblies from our circuit here. And if we're talking about, you know, multiple additions for like multiple bits, if it's, if it's a lot bigger, uh, that ends up saving a significant amount of power and mechanisms in your circuit. So yeah, this can be made a lot more efficient. And yeah, so that's just an incredibly detailed overview of my uh, project to build a calculator in Dwarf Fortress. So I hope I got to teach you about binary addition, about how to read and make circuits and how to do some basic computing in Dwarf Fortress. If you guys want to make your own big projects, you know, feel free to, to let me down below. I would love to see, you know, some two digit adders. I'd love to see some multiplication. I'd love to see some division, although division's pretty hard. But yeah, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. I think in classic, someone even made Space Invaders. I hope I can get some more people interested in computing in Dwarf Fortress and we can get some cool stuff being made by the community. I hope you found this guide useful, and if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to watch more content like this, you can check out any of my videos on screen right now, or catch me on Twitch, where I stream games like Dwarf Fortress pretty regularly. Hopefully, I'll see you soon.